We're waiting for Anderson. He's wrapping things up. He's been doing a ton of interviews. Forrest probably ran home. And uh, <laughs> who's got the first question? And uh, with the Forrest situation, not the first time you've had him leave an arena like that. Probably the first time you've had to chase somebody down, you know, halfway back to the locker room. Can you talk about what you said to him when you finally caught up to him? He drives me crazy, this guy. It's, <laughs> it's like professional suicide. The things he does, people love Forrest Griffin. Okay? So I ran after him, and I can... I mean, do I really have to tell you guys what I mean? Everybody in this room knows exactly what I said to him. <laughs> right? So he turned around and he ran back into the ring. And then I said, I met him out back in the hall. I said, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Are you mental? <laughs> and, and, and he said, I was really depressed. And I said, well, the next time you're depressed about winning a fight, go back in the back and be depressed, okay? Stand up there. It's Tito's last night. You know what I mean? Tito just won his fight. Stand there. Get your hand raised or Tito's hand raised. Do your interview and go, if you're bummed out, do it in the back, all right? And if you're bucking for Joe Rogan's fucking job, it isn't gonna happen. That's Joe's job. Leave the microphone alone until Joe comes over and talks to you. You know, it drives me crazy. I love Forrest Griffin, always have. He's a great guy, but he gets a little kooky sometimes, you know? Yeah, Anderson grabbed my trunks, but I grabbed his right back, man. It goes both ways, and, and we can't sit in, in nitpicks, you know, some of that stuff. It's a, it's a two-man sport. It's kind of like moving the chains in football. It, it evens itself out. What goes around comes around. If Anderson grabbed my shorts tonight, I'll grab somebody else's down the road. <laughs> to you over here to your left. Uh, we kind of heard Dana's uh, reaction to Forrest grabbing the mic, but I'd like to know yours. I'm sure that you've kind of envisioned I was your bullshit. final moments. Come on, dude. You, you, you're going to be in the sport a lot longer. You understand, 15 years ago, May 30th, 1997, Joe Rogan was the first person to interview me. And I told him, I'm going to make a mark in this sport. If you're going to your first fight, I mean, just wait. I'm going to make a mark in this sport. I helped build a sport that built me the person I am today. And for Forrest to step in and do what he did. After running? Oh, no, man. I, I, I can't complain about anything. As I said, I fought. I did what I wanted to do. I wish Joe Rogan would have interviewed me. But that's what we got press comments for. I sincerely apologize. I, I honestly wasn't thinking. I I can see you guys have a ton of history. I, I apologize. Uh, I wish I could take that back, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> have you ever thought of going to Russia? Russia? Hmm. I don't know how well I do in Russia, but uh, yeah, I, th it's funny to say that because uh, I'm joking, but uh, yeah, we're, we're actually taking an event to Russia very soon, very soon. Question for Chael, toward the end of the fight there was a meme, was that a good legal meme? You know, I don't make those decisions, and I hate those rules anyway. You know, I'm an old school guy before we had rounds and weight classes and all that stuff, and we're in a lot better spot now. I don't propose we should go back to that, but I don't care about legal or illegal. I could see him. I could see it coming. It's just the way it goes. Great. Chill. Uh, I don't think we've ever seen Anderson respond or act the way he did on the conference call, on the initial press conference, and on the weigh-ins. But at, at the end of the fight, he embraced you and even asked for the Brazilian people to applaud you. What was running through your mind at the moment? Well, I, that's, that's the way you, you deal with combat. You always shake hands and you always leave it in the octagon or in the ring or on the mat. Those are the rules, and I follow those same rules. Uh, that was great that he did it. It was very nice of him. And the Brazilian fans have it down right. They back their guy. And uh, North America is the only country in the world where we don't do that. And that's fine. But I really admire the Brazilian fans, including when I'm getting booed on the way in. I should be getting booed when I'm taking on their guy. And one of the things... Let me just jump in here for a second. That, that, that is always hysterical to me. Now, leading up to this fight, everybody was saying, Chael Sonnen crossed the line. He said things you shouldn't say. Well, you know, da 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 Chael Sonnen is bad for the sport. He shouldn't be in the sport. Then, as we get closer to the fight, and this guy's listened to everything under the sun about his country, his family, his team, his this, his that, 
he gets angry, you know, and the shoulder thing happens, and I wish it didn't. I, so that's why I stand there. I'm not standing there to take fucking photos. I'm supposed to be there to make sure that that thing doesn't happen. It happened so fast that I was upset with myself, and then I watched the replay, and I'm like, there's no way in hell I could have stopped that, unless I didn't even let them get near each other. But now, then everybody says, Anderson Silva's so horrible, he lost fans, this and that. Does everybody realize this is a fight? This is the fight business. This is what guys, you know, not all the time guys are going to like each other, and they're not always going to be friendly, and it's not always going to be, you know, uh, we're not always going to live within the martial arts realm. It, it doesn't happen all the time. This is a fight, and this is the fight business. Okay. Uh, to finish, uh, Anderson, is there any ill will still for Chell? I'm going to start with any incident to Mao or to Chell. Well, I, I really believe if you're going to be in this company and you're going to take up a spot, that you've got to be chasing the championship. Don't be there just to be a good... There's plenty of young guys that, that, that can come in and get their opportunity. And uh, I had my chance. And uh, then I got it again. And I'm not going to ask for anything. I'm grateful for it. Uh, I'll make those decisions later. But I will not hang around, not for one day, uh, to blend in. I'll, uh, it's either to be the world champ or, or move on and do something else. Uh, and you can hold your head up, but do you take things from this fight knowing that the kind of fight you gave this man, uh, you put him in a place that no one else has put him, do you take any, any uh, solace in that? Uh, you know, I don't. It's, 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 uh, it's pass or fail when, when you're in there. You either get it done or you don't. I was handed a lot of compliments after the first fight. I'm going, geez, guys, that's nice, but did you see who won the fight? I didn't win the fight. And uh, it's pass or fail. That's it. And, uh, you know, he's just a regular guy. He's another guy. We weigh the same thing. Uh, and he finds a way to win, and I admire him. Chill, what are the chances we actually see you share Brazilian barbecue with Anderson Silva? I am starving. I could go for some uh, Brazilian barbecue right now. <laughs> but only if it's medium rare. Is that for Kong? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, just, I'm just going to go and enjoy this win right now and uh, just heal up and we'll see what happens. What he meant was I'm going to go back, get back in the gym and I'd love to fight in China. <laughs> I'm translating for company. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to go back in the gym and get ready for China. <laughs>